Alright, welcome back to the workshop. My name's Sean Eafley and in today's video I'm going to be replicating this writing desk by Alberto Izzel. Now this was a commission and the client really liked that writing desk and asked me to make it for him. So in this video I'm going to be building the whole thing and I'm going to be stopping at the key points in the making process to talk to you about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So if you want to follow along at home or do something similar that should be really helpful. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Sit back, get the popcorn ready and let's begin. Okay, so to bring you up to speed on what we've done is I've veneered the top and bottom and I've made some rails and I've dominoed it all together. Now some people don't like veneered furniture, they think it's a bit cheaper or not as good as solid wood, but actually a lot of high quality, high end furniture nowadays is veneered, but that's not a bad thing, it's actually better. And it's also sometimes not cheaper. Uh, veneering's a more expensive process than solid wood. For example, with this table, it probably would be cheaper doing out of solid cherry on the top because all I need to buy is a board of cherry, plane it, and then glue the two boards together. And time-wise, that's a lot quicker than lipping some MDF where you've got to plane the lipping, domino it on, let that dry, sand it flat, and then veneer the top and bottom. That's a much longer process. It costs more in time and the materials are quite similar because construction of veneer is expensive and it's still got solid wood cherry lipping. You've got the luxury of knowing that the top will never warp or cup or move. You've got no issues with wood expansion or contraction. With it being veneered, this top is going to stay perfectly flat for the rest of its life and the construction's a bit easier. These rails I can just domino straight into the top and glue together and I don't need to worry about the top moving this way. The only wood that's going to move within this carcass are the side rails that will move up and down. So now the carcass is pretty much done, it's not glued up, I still need to sand it and I want to sand the inside and finish the inside before I glue it up because it would be very difficult to reach inside and finish it. So I'm going to take it apart, sand it, add some finish so the drawers slide easily and then we're going to glue it together. So let's do that.
practice is done, now it's time to move on to the leg frame. Now I've made this template. It's always a good idea to make templates in woodwork because if you're making multiple components that need to be the same, it's a lot quicker spending the time to make a good template that you can either flush them around or, or pull in the machine so then all the components are exactly the same. If I didn't do this template and I cut all the legs out individually and shaped them by hand trying to match them all, it would take a lot longer. Another benefit of making a template for the leg is you can place this onto the boards and this will allow you to choose the best grain direction for each leg component. So hopefully you can see on the camera there's this split here and the grain is sort of running in that direction. So for this curved leg, that's actually perfect. Normally I wouldn't like a board with this grain on the end, I normally like it really straight like this board, but because the leg is curved, this is perfect. This is gonna make the leg so much stronger that the grain is matching the curvature of the leg. If the leg was going this way, then you're gonna get some really short grain here and then it's really easy for the leg to break off on the end. So you wanna look over your boards to see where the best place your leg stock could go and you want the grain to roughly have the same curvature of the leg. So the rails and the legs have a nice round over on them and I've sanded them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue up the leg frame in stages. I'm gonna glue up this rail and leg pair first and then the second one. And that's gonna allow me to sand the joints and these corners easily while it's flat before the half lap is glued in place and it's all one piece. So I use the domino to cut these joints. There's three mosses so there's gonna be a lot of glue surface. It's gonna be a very strong joint. And because the outside of the leg is curved, I've made these curved clamping blocks so the parallel jaw clamp can clamp evenly across the whole surface. and the carcass is done and the carcass 
attaches onto the leg frame with inserts. A benefit of making this piece in two parts is for transport and you know getting it into the house. The doors are narrow, I don't really want to bump the edges, so if I can take it in two parts and then turn the top on its side to fit through a door, then that will prevent any scratches. If the client wanted to move house in the future and take the desk with them, it would be much easier if it was in two parts. So I'm going to bolt the leg frame on now and then we're going to make some drawers to fit it. the dovetail drawers. I've cut all the sides to size. So these are the front panels of the drawer and I cut them on the table saw so there's no wiggle room side to side because the grain is going across the drawer. The wood won't expand lengthways but it will expand up and down. So there's about a millimetre and a half gap between the top and bottom. So as you can see there's a bit of movement there. That's what you want because the drawer will expand that way. The dovetails are cut and I've cut a groove in the side so the bottom has somewhere to slot into. I skimmed over the dovetail cutting bit because I recently did a three part series on how to cut dovetails. So if you're interested in improving your dovetails, I'll put a card on top of the screen now and a link in the description down below if you want to check that out. So the drawers are glued up, the bottoms aren't fitted yet but I've sanded the edges and they're sliding in and out very nicely. It closes on a cushion of air as you can see which is very nice. Like I said there's a bit of movement up and down but there's no movement really side to side and you want it snug against the wall so it slides nicely like that. As you can see, on the drawer right now, there's through dovetails all the way around. Now through dovetails are obviously a lot quicker to cut than half blinds. So a good trick if you want to do half blind dovetails quickly, is do through dovetails on the front of the drawer, and then glue on the front a piece of veneer. And that will hide the end grain on the tails, and then you're going to get a half blind looking joint. Now you can go a step further and cut a piece of constructional veneer off that you used for the top. So I saved this piece from the tabletop. As you can see, the grain matches perfectly. It's the right color. So I'm gonna cut this in half and use this piece on the front of the drawers. So then the grain on the top of the table and the front of the drawers, is gonna be a perfect grain and color match and it's all gonna look very uniform and neat.
is nearly done and there's one more thing we need to do before finishing and that is add the drawer stopper. Now some people do this wrong so I thought I might talk about it. And that is, you don't want the drawer hitting the back of the carcass. And that's all because of wood movement. So if there was a stopper at the back of the carcass, then you've got the back of the drawer, the side of the drawer that won't move a lot, but will include it, and the front of the drawer, all expanding together. So when this drawer expands, it's very likely to come out the front of the desk and not be in line with the drawer dividers. So we want the front of the drawer to be in line with the desk. And the best way to do that is gluing your drawer stopper at the front of the carcass, so then it hits the inside bottom of the drawer front. We've got this space here because the panel is in this groove. So if this drawer stopper hit the front of the drawer, then the only component that is going to move is the drawer front. And that's going to be so minimal compared to the whole drawer. So you've got to make sure this drawer stopper is thinner than the gap underneath the drawer, so it's not riding on it. But if you can imagine the drawer going in, then that drawer front is always going to be in line with the drawer dividers and the sides and the back of the drawer can expand into the carcass because there's space at the back there. So I hope I explained that well, it's a much better way of doing it and I'm going to glue it in now. There we go, I'm really happy with how this desk came out and I hope you like it as well. If you've got any questions that I didn't manage to cover in the video then feel free to comment them down below and I will reply to your comment. If you're new to the channel and you enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe and like the video and if you really like the video then I'd really appreciate it if you share this video with your friends, it really helps out the channel. So thank you for sticking to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon for the next one.